We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. Thank you guys for all your mug orders. We've been sending a lot of those out this weekend and they continue to pour in, so we appreciate that. Now remember, the money that we make on these mugs, which isn't really a whole lot, but it does go to offset some of the cost of restoration, which is why we're here. So we do have the squirrel problem still, and it's still running around here and there. And we've moved the trap to a few different places. We've got some more reading to do, and we'll see if we can catch it soon. We've got some plans, we'll figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just keeping you updated. So what work are we gonna do today? Well, this week I'm on vacation from my day job. So we have one whole week plus two weekends to do whatever we want to do here. Being that the weather is getting colder here, we decided that we're going oh. to have an indoor project as well as an outdoor project that we're working on. So depending on the weather, we can go outside or inside. It got cold in the south. I did not know it ever got cold in the south. Mm -hmm. Surprise. Surprise, yes. Yeah, but, I had no idea. But it's nowhere near as cold as it was in New York, I guarantee you that. No. So anyway, we are in the room with the yellow wallpaper. This is the same room that we opened up the fireplace in and did the clean out there. So we've decided, why don't we start in this room? We'll do the restoration in here first. This will be our first indoor restoration. Yeah, we got that other bedroom cleaned up next door mm -hmm. and it's all clean and pretty so we're going to start on this one yep first thing we have to do is as usual clean it out yes <laughs> I'm gonna take you on a tour of the room and show you what's up. Okay, first of all, the wallpaper has to come off, and here's why. First of all, this is plastic wallpaper. It's not paper paper, it's, just, it's all plastic, and it has some problems. Hear that? There's poor adhesion going on. Over here, there's no adhesion at all. And then there's a few other issues too. So if you come over here, up here you can see where somebody cut the wallpaper and patched it. But most compelling of all, over here in the corner, there's this weird wrinkling going on all the way down the corner. This is part of the bay window. And I suspect that there may be some water intrusion problems either currently or in the past that's caused the plaster behind it to fail. So those are the reasons why the wallpaper needs to come off. Uh, but also just so we can check the condition of the walls underneath. And we may possibly have to open the walls up to get utilities through. Up here on top, you can see where there's peeling of paint. Now there could be any number of reasons for that, but generally it's caused by moisture. So we don't know whether the moisture came in from the roof and got wet. Uh, we don't know if it's just ambient moisture that caused the paint to just finally give way. We really don't know. But the bottom line is, the rest of the house doesn't have painted ceilings, and it's the same beadboard that's everywhere else. So we'll go ahead and strip that down to the bare wood, or at least down to the shellac if there is any left. Now down to the fireplace. We have these beautiful wooden fireplaces, and somebody painted them. So we're going to unpaint them. There's supposed to be tile work here. There's not, so we don't know if somebody took it off, we also need to repoint the bricks in the fireplace and clean up the hearth a little bit. And the ironwork here needs to be stripped and finished in a proper black paint that's made for wood stoves. The other thing I'd like to point out is the baseboards here. These are not the original vintage baseboards. It looks to us like somebody took out the originals and then replaced it with these. If you go around the house, you'll find that everywhere else, the baseboards are very ornate even in the upstairs bedrooms. 
but for some reason these were changed. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the windows. They need to have all their paint stripped off and be refinished. They need to have new glazing installed. Um, in a lot of cases, the glazing is missing or badly cracked. We also have broken sash cords. And I've seen this a lot in older homes. For years, you'll find sash cords that are brittle and most often because they were painted. So we'll change those out. A lot of the doors in this house, they don't close. They hit the bottom here and they just won't go any further. And we have a few that work right, but a lot of them don't. And if you look here, look at the size of this gap here compared to the size of this gap down here. That means that somehow this door is sagging downward. And that could be caused by any number of things. It could be that the hinges, you probably can't see them on camera, but sometimes the screws will come out and that could make it sag. It could also be worn out hinge pins too. That could also make it sag. So I'm taking the cover plates off of the light switch and the outlets. Wow. This cover plate here is solid brass. And it's about 3 eighths of an inch thick. They don't make them like that anymore. It's heavy. Yeah. What happened to that screw that hit the floor? Oh, apparently it's up my feet. Okay. I got it for you. <laughs> I'm just taking a close look at this light switch here. It says, I can't read it. So what happens when you get old, you can't see things anymore. Right there on the it's push just, button. Yeah, but it's all black. It's all black? Yeah. So it's hard to see. It's too dark. Well, I know you're all dying to know what it says, so let's turn the light on here and see. Holmes Diamond. Holmes Diamond? H. Diamond H. Holmes? I don't know if it's... The top part here says... Holmes, there's an H, and then it says Diamond H. Oh, yeah, Diamond H switch. The switch Holmes. is mounted upside down. Normally the mother of pearl goes on top. But you can see that it's upside down from the printing and everything. Yeah. Oh, really interesting. You can also see how much the wallpaper has changed color. Let's see about getting this stuff off. This is little glue patches from the wallpaper. It just scrapes right off easily. I'm not pushing hard, see? It just comes right off. That's good. bump here. I wonder what damage was done in here. So this is what their rough patch plaster looks like. It doesn't look finished. They intended to put wallpaper on this to start with, which is interesting. They've got a couple different colors on here too. There's some beige and there's some pink down in here. Well, honey, I opened up a can of worms. I guess we gotta do this room now. Yes, we do. Now, it's interesting you were talking about this. Yes. Um, Is it the electrical part? Maybe it, that's how they got the wires in? It could be, but I'm seeing the adhesive, but I'm also seeing some old paint here. I see a, 
a beige paint and a green paint. That was what you were talking about there. It looks like the plaster underneath is very rough. Mm -hmm. Or they had a high sand content and didn't really finish it out. It's hard to tell. Well, that's what I was saying. It doesn't look finished. It looks yes. grained as if they were going to put wallpaper on it, and they would want it more grainy if they were putting wallpaper on it. The green stuff, though, is only around these areas and in this line. It's not anywhere else. There's some blue paint under here, too, which is kind of interesting. I'm not really sure what they did. Now, back in the old days, when they put electrical systems into houses, and we don't think that this house originally had electric when it was built, it was 1900, and the town didn't yet have electricity yet. That was added maybe 10 years later with a local power plant. But what they would do is they would cut a hole in the bottom and cut a hole in the top, and then they would fish the wire through. Or in some cases, they would just basically just gouge out a trough. What it looks like. Put the electrical <laughs> in there. That's still pretty common over in Europe and, and England. We've seen that on some videos even, even recently. Yeah. They'll, they'll just take and gouge it out, put the wire in, and then patch it back over with plaster. So that could have something to do with it, or, or it could just be a coincidence that whatever was here peeled off. a lot easier than I thought it would. And it's all one piece kind of thing. Instead of like little strips, it's bigger strips, and it's coming off easy. Sweet. in here and it makes it a little harder to get the paper off of that section. plaster breathes, right? But this plastic wallpaper and all of its sticky glue does not let the walls breathe. And here in the south with the humidity we have, the wallpaper can't stay sticking to the plaster on all the corners and up along the edges. Quite a bit of it's coming off because of that. So if we're going to put wallpaper back up, it's got to be the proper kind.
Well, here's something interesting we found under the wallpaper. I think, what is that? It almost looks like a hole that was patched. Well, I have a good theory. So apparently Mike had found a second layer of wallpaper here, but they are so well glued together, we can't tell what it is. That does explain why it's so thick. <clears throat> I just can't get those bottom parts. They're really glued on hard. Hey guys, so I've been playing with the speed heater here trying to get some paint off and it's going really well so I thought I'd show you what's going on. What I do is I put it on here and let the infrared heat get into the paint. It takes about 30 seconds to get a good hot spot going. But I just hold it on here and I wait. And after a minute it starts to smoke a little bit. Now I've got my scraper here. Some of you asked about my little scraper. Now I've got a bigger scraper. All right, it's getting close. Okay, there's smoke, I pull it away, and start pulling. Look at that, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Underneath here is shellac wood. That's great news, because it means that it was originally shellac, and somebody just painted over it. Now I move on, oops, I just turned it off. <laughs> now I move on and do the next section. Some of you were concerned about the speed at which this thing worked on our outdoor stuff. And yeah, it was a problem, but um, I adjusted the side shields there, which actually brings the heater closer to the paint. Um, they're, they're shipped with the, the side shields fully extended, and that holds it away quite a bit. Okay, there's the smoke. Pull it away. And pull. Take it right off. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, there goes a little spider running away. So it does leave a little bit behind, but we'll go back and take care of that later. Right now we just want to get off as much as possible. So let's do one more. Put it on and then wait. Okay, here comes the smoke. Give it a quick, quick pull. And that paint comes right off. Now we just have to keep doing that. This is our smaller unit. See, it gets nice and hot there. I'm gonna try a little bit of the fireplace here because I'm just curious to know, is that oak or is it something else? So I'm just gonna put that on there. Give it a few seconds. It doesn't take very long. Just a few seconds is all it takes. It bubbles right up, comes right off. And there it is. Oh, you know what? That may be oak. That is definitely oak. Somebody painted an oak fireplace. Ah! <laughs> why, why, why? So it's our job to unearth all of that beautiful wood there and get it refinished properly. It just takes a few seconds. Scrape it off. It's a whole lot faster than a chemical stripper too. Wow, look at that. Beautiful striped wood. Now, by me scraping it and heating it and everything, we're damaging the shellac underneath, but that's okay because we can, we can fix that. Wow, would you look at that? This is only one layer of paint too, which tells me that somebody came along, I don't know, maybe to freshen up the house for sale. I'm not really sure what, 
but there's only one layer of latex on here. That looks amazing. It's getting to be really messy in here, so I'm going to start taking wallpaper and just kind of stepping on it. We need to get the stuff out of here and in, into the trash can before it gets to be too much of a hassle. It's the old adage, clean as you go. We've gotten half of the room done with the wallpaper coming off. Now this green stuff, whatever it is that they put on it, I thought it was just for the wires. But if you look over here, you see these cracks. I cannot believe how many cracks. The good thing though is that you can tell they're not expanding all the time, which is nice. So the wall is not continuously falling anywhere. There's no gap between any of them, so that's good, but hooey. We've got a bit of work to do, don't we? But look at this, it's looking good. Looking really good. We're getting most of it off. I'm excited. We're back at it for another day and we're going to see if we can get some more of this wallpaper off of here. But it's a nice day and it's actually warm outside so we're hoping to go do some more paint stripping out there where the electrical work is. Yes. pretty good. It's a good workout, but it's not too hard. back over here where Jeannie had pulled the wallpaper off. Uh, yesterday I was starting to overheat the wallpaper a little bit and uh, I really didn't want to catch it on fire so I stopped working over there. But I'm over here now and this is working just fine. So I've got my heater, put it on there for a couple of seconds, like just about like that. It starts to smoke and just pull it right off. I can only do a couple of inches at a time, but that's all right. It comes off nicely. And once the area is heated, it's already warm. So it only takes a couple of seconds to get it hot again to pull some paint off. So it really goes fast. And the neat thing about this is we don't have to worry about waiting for paint stripper to do its work. We also don't have to spend the money on paint stripper. So there's a significant cost savings. We just have a little bit of money for power. 
these scrapers are nice and sharp and they do a real good job of taking that off. And it's not really damaging the finish underneath. So I just keep working one area at a time. And this wood is definitely shellacked underneath. Having the wood shellacked like that actually makes it easier to remove paint in the future. just a couple of seconds to get things hot. And then we just scrape it right off. It's not real difficult. It's just precarious because I'm on the ladder. I don't want to fall off. Here is that little split. Time to see what's underneath that. Ooh. A big crack. So even though it's a big crack, it's not split very far apart. Just pieces have come off. So that's not too bad. Came off. Woohoo! That is so satisfying. Yes, the last strip of wallpaper in this room. Oh yeah. I think this one's gonna come off pretty easy. we can really see what we're working with. You can see all the little cracks here. Thankfully, they're only little cracks. So this is all fantastic. We'll just put another coat of plaster on here. It'll be the outer layer, of course, except above this closet. This closet, we may take all of that out and replaster that completely because that looks really deep. It's not separated, but it looks really deep. 
And because of that, I would rather take that whole piece out and replaster that all together. Everything else is looking great. All right, continuing on here, I'm just trying to scrape off as much as I can. It's kind of an odd combination of burning paint smell and the sweet smell of pine. It has a very strong pine smell. This tool is working really well. We have other scrapers with different shapes. This one here is shaped like a Starfleet emblem. And I have another one over there somewhere that has curves in it, different sizes of curves. I have convex curves, concave curves. Oh, thank you, love. So it looks like this. It has a flat spot and then different size curves. So later on, I should be able to come in here and scrape some of this out. But I'm trying to get the flat spots first, just because they're easy and faster and kind of fun, actually. I was on the other side of the house, stripping paint, and I looked up behind the siding and I saw another piece of wood up there. Oh, well, that got me to thinking, what if there is Victorian siding underneath all of this? Back when we did the real estate walkthrough on this house, a lot of you said, there's nothing to do to that house. Well, as you're starting to realize, and we're really starting to realize, there's a lot to do with this house. Cosmetically, it looks good because it's kind of been painted over and glossed over, but it has issues, as you can see. Peeling paint, rotten wood. So, since this wood is rotted, I'm gonna go ahead and peek under here. Look at that. That is punky wood. There's nothing left there, wow. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off because there's nothing left there anyway. Ah. I want to see what's behind it. Oh, that is nasty. Well, looks like there's some tar paper. <laughs> this is crazy. It's kind of like uh, some of the home improvement shows. So, just looking at this right now, I see tar paper, and then behind there, I see diagonal boards. So what that means is, no, there isn't Victorian siding behind it. Um, the diagonal boards are the sheathing that they used on the houses back in the old days, because the diagonal boards give it more resistance to racking. Racking is this kind of motion. We don't want that. So the diagonal boards make a nice stiff wall, and then they put the siding on over that. So now that we know what's there, we're probably certain, to a certain degree, that there's no Victorian siding under there. So that answers the question. Just one more thing, people, please. If you have a wood-sided house and it's doing this, fix it, get it painted. Otherwise, it'll rot out. I took a minute to measure this, and what I discovered is that the boards are three quarters of an inch thick. They're five and a half inches wide. That is exactly the dimension of a modern one by six. So we can go down to the lumber yard and get us a piece of one by six pine, which is probably what this stuff is. And we'll just rip out all of the ones that are shot and we'll nail the new ones in place. Now we're inside the dining room. This spot right here is on the other side of the wall from where I took the siding off. Look at that. That moisture was wicking through there slowly seeping through and causing the paint to fail. I think once we get that siding replaced and properly painted, then we can go ahead and fix this. It's time for a squirrel update. So the squirrel keeps getting in. I know where he's coming in at. The thing is, I can't seal it off because it's in a location that's inaccessible. So um, I scratched my head a bit and did some thinking and finally came up with 
this product, which is a squirrel repellent. So what I did is I went up there and I, I sprinkled it. It's kind of a powder. You just sprinkle it up there and it gives off such a, a noxious smell. And what it does is it causes their eyes to burn and it kind of kind of makes their lungs burn a little bit if they in inhale it. And so what that does is they, they get a whiff of that and they're supposed to just turn around and flee. And that, that's the whole idea behind the product. So I went ahead and sprinkled that up there at the entrance. And then I covered up the opening to the best of my ability with a piece of hardware cloth and a board. So now the squirrel can no longer just dart in. He's going to hit this stuff and not be able to go past it. And that's going to put him right in the thick of the squirrel repellent. So knock on wood, we didn't hear a single thing this morning. So we're hoping that we finally got it out of there and we'll keep it out until the point where we can go and make the permanent repairs. Now, we're almost to 10,000 subscribers. And that's a milestone for YouTube that will enable us to do more things with the channel as they unlock features and things. So uh, here's what I want to do. When we hit 10,000 subscribers, I will take you on a tour of the spooky attic. This has never been seen before on this program. I will take you up there and I'll show you every corner of the spooky attic when we hit 10,000 subscribers. So that's what I'm throwing out there. All right, thanks for watching, 1834 Restoration House.